Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro, the COVID-19 edition. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. I do nothing but elder law, but this is not about elder law. This is about primarily my friends, Frank and Mary, and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. If you've seen me do presentations, you know that their goal is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard, right? I see our guests just smiled at that. I always tell the, my seniors, if you're old enough to get the joke, you're old enough to be my client. So the, the, the purpose of this show is to allow you, if you re- identify with Frank and Mary and you're here in Westboro, to know the people you need to know and the programs you need to know about in order to be happily living here in Westboro. And right now, if you're Frank and Mary, you've been stuck in your house for like way too long and you're trying to figure out how to get out, um, but also trying to figure out how else how everybody else is doing it and what else is going on. So that's the purpose of this show. Now, you all know, if you've seen this, that my good friend Shelby Marshall is my terrific co-host because she knows everybody because she's a selectman here in Westboro. Shelby, thank you for coming on. I noticed that you told me that we actually have a guest that we've had on before, but her ratings were so high that she got <laughs> invited back by popular demand. This is this is very exciting. So whom do we have today? Yeah, so yeah. off the charts rating for um, chart. for our guest today, Kelly Petroia. Kelly is the executive director of Westboro Connects, and really she requires no further introduction. Hi, Kelly. Hello. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, I have to so, say, it was a nice change of pace to dig out the hair dryer, decide on the root color spray to use. I actually went with the headband oh, instead. I'm so going all natural. Oh, right. nice. Right. And we I don't heard. actually know if you still have pajamas on, you know, but, but, but you know, <laughs> the, your, your head was great. Headshot Thank is great. You. So. <laughs> so I asked Kelly to come on. Uh, you know, we we had a great conversation um, months ago now, I guess, with Kelly as she was sort of previewing um, the Aging Enjoyably in Westboro event that we had that was such a great success and obviously sharing with the community what is Westboro Connects. Um, so Westboro Connects has been doing amazing work um, across generations and our entire community since then. Um, but I've asked Kelly to come on today to talk specifically about how Westboro Connects has been connecting with the community um, during this COVID-19 crisis and specifically to talk about a really, really cool project that they have launched um, uh, called Together Apart Always, if I got that right, Kelly. So please, Kelly, take it away and the show is yours. Hey, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so as Shelby said, Westboro Connects is, um, a, 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 well, a growing organization. We're small, but we've been very busy recently. We have always been, since our inception, pretty busy and, and growing quickly. Um, but the need for sort of our mission of connecting and building community strength and spreading kindness in this whole context and frame of what's going on with the COVID-19 pandemic has just, you know, come to mean something different um, or more, you know, mean more maybe. So, you know, kind of as a refresh, and I have been here before, but, you know, we believe just as Frank and Mary do that Westboro is a great place to live, no matter what age, stage of life that you are in. There's so much um, in Westboro for everybody. Um, And what we really try to do is promote all the great people and the organizations and things that are going on. We collaborate and partner with those folks with that are already doing really great work and really try to amplify and, and make sure people know what's going on and what are the resources available, much like you do with this show. Um, so we've had to do, just like a lot of um, folks have and companies, um, we've really had to pivot in the recent months um, a lot of what we're doing. Um, no longer having our in-person meetings as much or having our coffees. We all love to run down to the coffee shop, many of us, and have meetings or one-on-one kind of touch bases. So a lot of that has been taken into different areas, doing more phone calls and online. Um, But we've been doing some things to keep up our regular communication through our email newsletters, which now we're doing actually um, weekly, just to kind of promote, inspire, try to like promote some kindness that's going on and things like that. Um, And as Shelby said, most recently, we have launched a new project called Together Apart Always, sharing stories of connection and resilience in Westboro. So this whole project is about um, 
really preserving the collective and individual experiences of all of us as a community during this epidemic and, and time of physical distancing. Um, we know that there are many, many struggles going on. People are going through their individual and collectively we are going through a lot of hardships. There's also these moments of of grace and, and unexpected joy and simplicity and the things that in our lives we take for granted on a regular basis, but that we can look around and take a moment to pause. And we when we're doing it together and we know others are doing the same thing, it really, it really fills us up. So with this project, we are trying to collect images, um, photos from people or or short kind of words of reflection, 50 words or less we're looking for that really just kind of capture what's going on. So there are different themes that we're looking at, capturing things like together we're stronger is one of the themes of the of um, like a chapter of the book that we're calling it, um, learning something new, what's a change of scenery or seeing something through a different lens. So we're really looking to collect those visual stories and perspectives. Um, the final um, kind of out come of that will be a, a book, a keepsake book that we will produce. Um, that piece of it will be a fundraiser to continue the work of Westboro Connects and help fund our ongoing organizational needs. Um, but we'll also make um, the images and some sort of slide presentation available on our website for free for people after the project is done. I just, when I heard about this idea, I just loved it. And and for folks wondering, I started to journal my entries by taking a photo here of this group as you really um, a way to kind of memorialize and capture, um, you know, how, how our outreach to the community has changed and what better way to start it. So, um, but I, I just think, I think this is great. Um, Kelly, can you talk to our viewers who, may not have Facebook, may not, you know, um, although we do want to make sure we get the newsletter um, email address up um, for folks that want to join. So I know Aiden and, and the Westboro TV team will take care of that. Um, but can you talk to our viewers about how they could submit information in the absence of technology? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so um, we have a few different ways to kind of interact with this project. As Shelby mentioned, we do have a Facebook page, but not everybody is on Facebook. So we'll make that page available if you want to join and follow it and like it, and you can submit pictures and photos through there or comments. Um, we also have an email address set up for this project, and it's called kathy5connects at gmail.com. Um, another option is to mail, if you, if you order prints from your photos or you have a printer at home, where a photo printer at home, you're welcome to mail them to our P.O. Box, P.O. Box 1476 in Westboro, Massachusetts, 01581, everybody knows that. Um, but if those options don't work for you, just give me a call. Um, my name's Kelly Petralia. I'm the executive director. My phone number is on a lot of things. I'm happy to provide that as well. Um, it's 617-877-0635. And we can kind of work together if we, you want to hang something on outside of your door and have me come pick it up and scan it in. I'm happy to do that as well. We just want to get this out to as many people as possible to have as many voices and perspectives represented. We're also translating many of our materials so people know how to engage with the project. Um, we've translated them in Portuguese, Spanish, and Arabic. Oh. Arthur, are you speechless? <laughs> That's a pretty amazing project. I mean, the, the, the notion of, of, of stepping back and realizing that this is this amazing moment in time Right. I remember I, it reminds me of so I, I do I do a show with another wonderful co-host in Nantucket. And I walk when I go to Nantucket, there's a museum right at the kind of the, the dock, the whaling museum, which has been closed for a number of, of months. But there's a wonderful sign in the front that says, you know, soon this will be history, mm. you know. And so doc documenting this unusual historical moment and give people giving people a chance to document it in the in the context of building community is just a really wonderful thing that's a really wonderful thing how do you find these things? <laughs> it's just a great so it's just a great idea and, and you know and thank you for the the fact that what you know for for for, for Shelby and I we've talked about you know this this show reaches a set of the population 
that may not be as as interested in in a, in some of the the computer literacy, you know, as as others. So to give them to give everybody really a way to participate in, participate in this is a really important thing. So the grandchildren will be seeing what their grandparents were thinking about during this bizarre time when they, you know, 50 years from now when they grow old. It's really great. Right. And every age and every generation has a different perspective on this, you know, for for the youngest people that are kind of going through this aware of what's going on, they have not, I mean, none of us have anything to really compare this to, but they have no real perspective of this versus somebody who's gone through times of um, <clears throat> collective, you know, strife and, and, and yeah. uh, challenges. So it is important to have all of those kind of ages represented. Right, and to have every, right, to have everybody represent. I, I heard a comment Actually, earlier today, from somebody who was saying that one that there were is a, a pastor in a church in um, uh, Northboro who was talking about the fact that they're doing you know a lot of stuff that's that's virtual and they're doing Zoom, but they said that the the kids are now not wanting to watch it. They're they're so tired of being in front of their computer screens. I said, what a concept. <laughs> their kids tired of being in front of their computer screen. So it's just it's just a strange moment in, in that it, it does. It has caused people to be like outside a lot, you know, and to be it's really interesting. It's a fascinating thing. Fascinating thing. And I suppose you're really connecting with, of course, a whole variety of these populations. Has that has this you know triggered a good response already or is this just kicking off? So we just kicked it off last Friday. I mean, we have um, we have a pretty engaged, um, well, group of folks that do like work and volunteer. Really, it's vol. This is driven by volunteers, um, and we've had a lot of engagement already. We've had people submitting both through the email and through Facebook. Um, submitting pictures and and just like expressing their enthusiasm. We've had some shout outs and stuff. It's been great. And we've been talking to different organizations, um, of course, like our library, the histor um, along with the Westboro Historical Society. Um, they're also doing like more of a, a longer written word um, um, kind of documentation of this time. And so we've talked to them about our project, which is a little bit of a different you know, approach and um, and we've just been talking to others out there to and there's been a great response. So that's pretty terrific. That's pretty terrific. Thanks. Shelby, how do you find how do you find these people? Well, <laughs> Kelly and the entire team of uh, at Westboro Connects, inclusive of you know the board um, and just the committees, and I mean it's it's just a it's a dynamic, healthy, positive group to work with. And I've never, never participated in a meeting that I didn't walk away from where I felt like, well, we've got work to do with it. This is really fun. And, and so kudos to, to all the work that's uh, been done so far. Kelly, do you want to just mention um, any other programs that are coming up? Any, anything else? Just want to give you a moment. Um, that, yes. As I said, we do have an email newsletter. Um, not everybody is on email and we've tried to make it a print version, but there are limitations to our system. And as we grow and have more funding, hopefully we'll be able to make something in more of a printed format for all. But I encourage people, if you're interested, to sign up for our newsletter. Um, we do have a website called Westboro Connects, O-U-G-H, uh, dot org. That's the address. Or again, you can email um, you can email me at Kelly Connects One. Um, that's K E L L E Y Connects One at Gmail .com. And I I used to have coffee and tea with people in Red Barn all the time, or Panera, or wherever. But I'm happy to do a virtual coffee or tea if anybody wants to reach out and and chat, and we can talk about the things that that we're working on. Right now, we're working with other civic groups in the town, the task force in the town, to try to match people up with folks that have needs in terms of like um, not critical like food insecurity needs. Although we're happy to. We include that information in our newsletter, but we're um, matching people up who who might want to help with, you know, where there might be needs. So we're looking at we're doing a community swap of crafts and puzzles and yarn um, right now. And that will be it's involving the rec um, department, the library, the senior center and the schools. Um, we were just involved in a face shield project where um, with Rotary Club and the Civic Club. 
of Westboro, we um, we made assembled 1,400 masks, uh, well, shields, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. face shields, not masks, um, and got them out to frontline healthcare providers and others. So there's a lot of great work going on, and um, it's just a, it's awesome to be part of. Yeah, so I want to remind our viewers, so this typically will air today's Wednesday. Um, the Westboro TV team usually produces this for the public viewing um, on Friday. So the following Monday, which is, I believe, the 18th, um, is another um, day where community members can bring crafts and puzzles and games and that sort of thing to the um, Forbes Municipal Building, right, Kelly? Yes, yes, from and three the, to five. Sorry. Thank you. Yep. Yes, three to five p.m. Um, on Mondays. Right now, we're we're collecting on Mondays from three to five p.m. Um, on the the right side entryway, so the police um, where the police entryway is. Um, and you're welcome to bring really gently used or, you know, like new kind of items. And um, there are volunteers from the women's club that are accepting those donations. So we just ask if you don't see a volunteer there to accept them, don't leave your donations unattended. But um, we've worked with the Board of Health to make sure that we're safely like letting those donations sit for four days and then they'll be distributed beginning next Friday. Um, the 22nd, I believe, is that um, from 10 to 12 in front of the library. And then we're also actually distributing them through the Westboro Public Schools, um, their meal program that they're doing, and through the Senior Center. Alma and Mary Donna are helping um, with that piece of it as well. Yeah. And I want to assure the public that the, um, you know, through my participation in the task force, Kelly is also a part of the task force representing Westboro Connects, um, that there's been painstaking details to ensure the safety of those collecting, those dropping off, and ultimately those receiving. So just want to assure the public of that thoughtful process. So great. Excellent. Kelly, well, thank you so much, Arthur. Thank um, you. Uh, you know, I'm sure the ratings are going to go through the roof again. The and roof. We'll have to reserve. You know, so we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll send you your ratings and we may have you back again by, by popular demand. No, it's just you keep doing such refreshing new things, you know. And Thank when you. things are a little bit calmer, we, I'd be interested in just having you kind of come back to talk about some of the highlights of what you of what came in. This is just a wonderful thing. Thank wonderful you. Yes. Thing. Anytime. Thank you, I'm happy to come back. Thank you both for what you're doing. It's great. Right. Thank Thanks, you. Kelly. Bye-bye. And Bye-bye. We'll, and, Bye, and we'll be back soon. Thank you. Hi, welcome back to uh, this installment of uh, Frank and Mary here in Westboro, the COVID-19 edition. Uh, we, I'm here with my wonderful co-host, Shelby Marshall. And Shelby, uh, I know that what we've tried to do with these shows is we've had, a, you know, we just had a great guest, Kelly Petraglia, but we've also tried to use the show to keep folks informed about kind of what is going on as an ongoing matter. And certainly we try to, we want to keep them informed about what is going on that is directly COVID related, um, but also what is going on like in the rest of the world. Because I think a piece of the, the, the difficulty with being kind of stuck at home is that you're not hearing about anything else that's happening. And if you watch the news, all it is is COVID, right? Not that that's not an important topic, right? But, but to start, getting a sense, as Kelly had said, to put this in context and know that, you know, the world is continuing now, right, right. is is important. So can we just kind of talk about that? Talk about sure. kind of what's, sure. what's going on. Yep. So I'll give a couple updates. We had our board of selectmen meeting last night, uh, along with the board of health. We continue to do that. It's been a great collaborative effort for folks that haven't had a chance to watch us live, um, which is the ratings are going through the roof, uh, not unlike this show, but also um, you can obviously watch that through Westboro TV and stream it and download it at your pleasure. Um, uh, But those meetings have been so helpful. We had a great presentation um, by the Dairy Queen manager actually last night. Lots of concerns had been, um, I I guess let me rephrase that. Concerns have been raised, some on Facebook, um, which sort of sometimes can be like fake news. Um, But there was a robust discussion between the Board of Health and the Board of Selectmen at the prior week's meeting about Dairy Queen um, and social distancing and are we keeping everyone safe and on and on and on. So um, 
we had the manager come on last night. She's a Westboro graduate, a uh, college graduate, and has um, been working at Dairy Queen for, I think, something like 10 years. Gave a great visual presentation uh, narrated by herself. And um, I think spoke, to, I, I mentioned it specifically because she spoke to the, the quality and the seriousness of which um, a perceived group of young people, you know, 17, 18, 19 year old uh, staff members and herself being relatively young are taking this matter and how they're trying to protect the public. And so I encourage folks to um, listen to that presentation, watch it. Um, and um, our, our chair, Ian Johnson, at the very end of the meeting around 10 o'clock, you know, made the point that we all have some personal responsibility in this. So we have personal responsibility to wear a mask um, or some sort of face covering, right? To keep social distancing, to make sure you don't have 10 people in the line that you don't know, but be respectful, not only of yourself, but those around you. And, and if we see something that's not right, then let's approach it in a kind way to say, geez, could you cover your face? Or if you have an issue with, let's say a store owner, go to the manager or make a phone call and say, I've got an issue because in the case of Dairy Queen, they got like one or two complaints, but there was this whole thread on Facebook that like, you know, just got totally blown out of proportion and they would have been more than happy to address any of those issues. So a little kindness, a little self-awareness and the respect that if someone is speaking up and they're concerned, at least give them the opportunity to, you know, share it and, and, be polite about it. So wow, that's a great that's a great sign because that's really kind of a that's a classic on the ground, right? I'm sure yeah. people have, people do have those kinds of concerns, right? Yep. And, and and but at the same time, Dairy Queen is an important piece of the community. Well, right? it's certainly spreading happiness in a time when you know we don't we don't want them to be shut down. So I just use that as as an example of of, you know, I think it, we have, we have great businesses in town that have, they're working closely with the board of health to do the right things and continue to modify, um, their kind of plan of attack in given the pandemic. Um, but we as patrons have responsibility to, um, and we in the community have responsibility to sort of say, Hey, kind of time out. Let's, let's be kind about how we're, uh, addressing this issue. So anyway, not to belabor the point, um, I also want to give a quick update. Um, we did talk about the um, further postponement of town meeting. Um, there's a procedural process that um, our town moderator has to follow. Um, it actually um, was, town meeting was set to be in the end of May. We fully anticipate, given that the governor has not issued guidance on the reopening the four stage planned, um, it, you know, at, at any level of detail right now, that um, it will be postponed to June 20th. Uh, there are conversations going on about whether to have that in the gymnasium or to have it outside at Westboro High School on the field. And then, of course, it's like lights, weather, you know, how do you kind of visually like see all the presentations, whatever. So um, all those uh, great uh, things are happening behind the scenes to to ensure the public safety, um, but also to ensure that the legislative process can continue. Um, and, and, and what about the elections? Are there the, are the elections? What's, what's yep. going on there? Yes. So the elections have been uh, postponed, uh, postpone, excuse me, um, scheduled to uh, June 20th. Um, and you can download a ballot, um, have, call the town clerk's office um, uh, and have them mail you a ballot. Um, you can also go and vote the day of, um, and if you download it, you can just drop it in the slot. There's a little black mailbox out in front of town hall. Just drop that in. And, and uh, we encourage folks to, to vote um, in the town election. Um, we also, I, I do want to recognize the Board of Health gave an update last night. Um, since last Friday, we had 15 new cases in Westboro. That brings our total to 283. And sadly, we also had six um, fo um, um, folks yes. from Westboro pass away. Uh, bringing our total to 47. So, and Dr. Ehrlich, one of our members of Board of Health, gave a great presentation about um, uh, mortality rates and questions that they've been, you know, you know, people are like, well, I want to know what, what's the age group of folks that are dying? What were their comorbidities? All of that. So he gave a, gave a great, I thought, overview of kind of when we're looking at mortality rate, what is that really telling us? So I would encourage folks to, to listen to that. 
And really, he kind of said, really, we want to look at this as trending. Are we getting better or worse? And, and you know, right now, I think we're sort of in a, um, we're, we're improving, meaning declining, but we're not, you know, dropping off a, a cliff, which we'd all like to see so we can get back to normal. Um, the uh, Board of Health also made the point that with these four phases that the uh, uh, governor is, is rolling out, um, to make it clear that those phases will operate independently of each other and indifferently across industries. So, you know, you might have law offices that roll out at a different uh, phase in place than um, obviously a sit down takeout restaurant. So just kind of uh, to, to let people know to watch that process. Um, we had a great recommendation from uh, Syed Hashmi, who's a member of the board. Um, suggesting um, a lowering of the flags um, to recognize um, those who have been lost from COVID-19. So um, our town manager is going to work with our, our veterans agent uh, to make sure we do that in a way that's respectful. Um, and so we're more to come on that. But uh, we hope to incorporate not only the lowering of the flags for a couple of days, but also working with the churches and the town hall uh, to ring the bells um, on on a particular day of time to recognize all that we've been, you know, kind of going through as a way to collectively uh, gather and and um, in a safe way and recognize that. Um, and, and I'll then, take a breath. And then I want, and, and I was going to say, and then I want you. I, I know that you had you had, you wanted to talk a little bit about the guests that we're hoping to have next time. Yeah. Yeah, because then so, we're about out of time, so we should be we should be close. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so uh, we'll have uh, Phil Kittridge on from our food pantry, and we may have another guest. Just depends upon time. Uh, I would like to ask anyone that would like to suggest uh, future guests. Um, Westport TV will put my email up. I'm happy to receive those requests, and we'll bring on whoever we can. Um, I do think um, it would be great for us to have on our town manager to talk about the budget impacts um, for FY 20 and 21 and maybe to get a master plan update and lots of other things kind of planned. So uh, love bringing this content to everyone. Arthur, it's a pleasure to work with you and just ask everyone to be kind and be safe and be smart. Be kind and be safe. Thank you very much all for watching. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you very much for the folks uh, to the folks at Westboro Cable who have just done a great job of, I think, using this as a way to keep a lot of people informed who otherwise might not have the same kind of connection. Um, and we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro, the COVID-19 edition. Thank you. Bye.